Hey, what's up guitar players and traders? It's John from Playing Trade Guitars here, back with an overdue edition of Craigslist Hall. Zach and I have been busy the past couple months with a few new ways of interacting with you, our guitar players and traders in the community. One, we've been doing consignment sales. If you've got something that you want us to feature and sell for you, get in touch, playingtradeguitars at gmail.com. And number two is guest collections. We've had a lot of people reach out and want us to feature their amazing high-end guitars. Uh, all kinds of cool stuff has come through. So we've got lots of stuff in the can uh, that we're editing and putting out over the coming weeks. But what I'll tell you is I miss flipping this hatchback lid for you and I do have a ton of awesome inventory. Wait till you guys see what's in here. So without further ado, let's flip this hatchback and let's get to work. Lots of guitars to get you guys caught up on. All right, so I'm gonna give you a look at this vintage Ibanez, probably mid to late 60s, uh, what we call spaghetti Ibanez logo. Crazy body, kind of reminds me of like a Tysco import Japanese guitar from the 60s. And this is how Ibanez got their start. It's a long cry from the RG series, the metal shredders that you see, the Steve Vai gems of the world. This is how it all started. A wacky 60s import from Ibanez in Japan. Looks like four pickups on this thing or two crazy humbuckers. Some organ switches, who knows what these do? I don't even know yet. A tone, a volume, and a volume. Interesting, I don't see any pickup selectors, so I'm assuming uh, those switches have something to do with combinations of these four pickups, is what I would assume. One switch per pickup, on off. It looks like they call them mics, almost like microphone one, two, three, four. Not something I've seen before. Rosewood fretboard with dot inlays. And there it is, the spaghetti logo. Model 994 collectors told me that the sticker is rarely still intact on these guitars. Probably mid 60s to late 60s Ibanez import. You can see uh, made in Japan there. And then just a very light, small footprint body. This guitar is very light. If I had to guess, it's probably somewhere around six, six and a half pounds, maybe tops. Now we're going 80s. So let's see how much changes that Ibanez in 20 years, huh? Let me move this case out of the way. See if I can even flip this case. I got so many cases in here. Ah, there we go. Late 80s to early 90s RG550. All original in blue with the Floyd Rose. So look how much has changed from the late 60s to the late 80s over at Ibanez. This is what we really think of, right? When we think of Ibanez. This is the classic, the golden era of Ibanez in the 80s. Amazing fast playing RG550. Locking nut for the Floyd Rose. Beautiful blue. Fast, fast, modern maple fretboard. You know, these are, these are the hot rodded sports cars of guitars. These things fly and I've owned them before and they're so fun. Something different, something truly, I thought, um, revolutionary and something truly different in the guitar world in the 80s. I mean, I think this really represents a golden age of Ibanez and a remarkable guitar. And I don't just have one of them, I got two of them. All right, now this is a cool case. Little stickers on here. Now this was actually a touring guitarist's RG550, and this one's in white. And this one I think is super cool. This one's pretty dinged up, but that's because someone showed it some love. It's got a non-original pickup here, but I have the original pickup in the case. So when I get this on the bench, I'm actually gonna replace the pickup and put back the original. Dot inlays, aged white looks absolutely beautiful. Some battle scars on this beast. Look at the wear on the fretboard, I love that. This thing has been played and loved for sure. All right, so here's the trio. A lot changes in 20 years at Ibanez. Unlike, you know, a Fender Telecaster, a Fender Strat, I mean, they still essentially look the same as they did when they were born. But here we see an evolution in a guitar company, starting with this spaghetti import from the mid to late 60s. Really kind of the wackier Japanese import from that era. Lots of switches, lots of dials, lots of pickups, lots of features, and then Zooming out to show you the golden age of Ibanez with the RG550, which inspired so many players, inspired the Steve Vai gem guitar. It's really cool to see these side by side. I mean, the horns are not all that different. It's a little more, you know, looks like a beetle, kind of like a scarab beetle. I think the 60s one, a little more pronounced body hump, a little sleeker when you get to the 80s on these Speed Machine RG550s. Uh, maple necks instead of rosewood. That's what happens in 20 years at Ibanez. Big, big change. And I, Ivan has settled into their modern design and came into their own. And I think these are still guitars that are extremely collectible and affordable. You should grab one if you can when you see them come up. They come in all kinds of cool colors. And I can't wait to plug these all in and see how they sound. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool. 
Only made for a few years and kicked off a revolution amongst guitar players my age, I can tell you that. This was a band that my buddies, Zach included, we came home from school and wanted to learn every, every lick in such formative years for us. Really excited to get our hands on this. <laughs> Here it is. Tom DeLong Strat, one humbucker, Rosewood, Squire, Blink-182, baby. My whole goal in life coming home from school was to play every riff on every Blink album in my young years when I was starting to play. And I love that this one has a little bit of wear on it, a few battle scars. This guitar is probably about 20 years old. All original, just a single Duncan designed humbucker and a single volume knob. Beautiful, beautiful surf green. Tom DeLong, man. Blink-182, super cool. Tom DeLong, his name right there in the plate. All right, can you believe this? We're about halfway through. I've still got three amazing guitars to show you. One more wacky import guitar that I was really excited about. An awesome cheap guitar, a couple hundred bucks, a few hundred bucks, awesome. And then two showstoppers uh, that you just won't believe. So stay tuned, let's get to the rest of these. I had so much fun buying this in. <laughs> it matches our HQ2 walls, that's for sure. This is a Hondo. This would be a 1983 Hondo Deluxe, imported Korean guitar. Story on Hondo, the Texas businessman saw guitars being imported from Japan and said, well, no one's doing it in Korea yet. So started building models very similar to Fender. See, they call this the Rising Sun Hondo logo or Sunset Hondo logo, I guess you'd call it. H758 is the model. It's got uh, butterfly tuners, just like you see on like a Korean Squire, you know, from the late nineties or that era. And this one, just like the Tom DeLong I just showed you, just one single humbucker and one volume. Who knows, maybe Tom had one of these when he was a kid and this inspired everything. Really sharp binding though. I mean, this is not an expensive guitar, but it's got really cool finish. Looks like a, if you cross like an old school bar with a bowling alley. Love, love, love those stripes. Super cool, super stylish, super early 80s. Oh yeah, you can see it now. Something from Gretsch, something from Fender. Which to open first, Gretsch or Fender? You ready for this? Oh my goodness, Champagne Sparkle Duo Jet. The Gretsch Bigsby, this thing, I don't know, it's a toss up. You guys will have to comment and decide which one is better when you see this Strat, but my goodness. Is this a beautiful, beautiful Duo Jet or what? This was made in Japan. It is generally seen as a silver sparkle finish. This is an incredibly rare champagne sparkle finish on this Gretsch Duo Jet, Sparkle Jet. It's a G6129 Gretsch Sparkle Jet, and this thing is just insane. So, so beautiful. Not to be outdone by that fantastic champagne sparkle Gretsch, we have something really, really unbelievable. Do you recognize the era? Look at this. How 70s is this? Someone's old, someone's own detailing. Fender Strat, written in some kind of like metallic Sharpie right there in the case. You ready to see this? Holy moly. Oh my goodness. This is an ash body, all original 1979 Strat. And that big, beautiful 70s Fender Stratocaster headstock, which I am in love with completely. Look at that bullet truss rod sticking out of there. This is in near perfect condition as it can get for its age. Holy moly. Let me flip it over for you in the case and give you a look. It really is hard to find a better example than this. Three bolts, fender micro neck adjust. Three screws instead of four. And the F fender logo on each tuner in chrome, so sharp. All right, in case you need more help deciding, how do you top this? How do you pick? So different, both so beautiful. That is some serious, serious guitarage right there. 
All right, everyone, it's John from Plant Trade Guitars signing off. It really doesn't get much better than this. I'm so blown away by this haul. I hope you like these. Weigh in in the comments, what was your favorite? Who wins this battle? Is it the 79 Strat or the 1997 Duo Sonic with that amazing champagne sparkle finish? Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. We're gonna get these on the bench, take them apart, feature them in all kinds of guitar demos and amazing videos to come. Like this video and share with your friends. We've got giveaways, we've got contests, all kinds of cool stuff. Thanks for checking out our latest Craigslist haul. Until next time, keep playing and trading. See you guys soon.